When most people think of Sweden, they think of blondes, herring, ABBA, winter sports, IKEA, and the city of Stockholm, Sweden's capital and the seat of its royal family. Stockholm is both ancient and modern, with some of Europe's most exciting new architecture, as well as sizable quarters full of medieval, renaissance, and baroque buildings. It also offers the traveler every cosmopolitan resource and thriving artistic and nightlife scenes. With a population of two million, it's home to two-ninths of the entire country. It's an exquisitely beautiful city. Built on 14 islands, Stockholm is often called the Venice of the North. The City Hall, built in the early 20th century, is a conscious reference to the palaces of its sister city south of the Alps. Speaking of Italy, Swedes are fond of saying that Sweden is so large, if it were to break loose and swing southward by a hinge at its southernmost tip, its extreme opposite end would almost reach Rome. This certainly seems to be true. While Stockholm is itself a world-class destination, one that would satisfy the needs of any traveler, it's only one offering in the smorgasbord of Sweden's attractions. In August of 2004, we visited another part of Sweden, unknown to most Americans, southeast of Stockholm and also surrounded by water. This time, though, the Baltic Sea. Hello. Gotland, Sweden's Cape Cod. Gotland, an island in the middle of the Baltic, is 90 miles long and 30 miles wide. Like Cape Cod in North America, Gotland is a seaside destination that appears to have pretty much everything a traveler could want. The city is close by, the countryside is everywhere. And like Cape Cod, there's so much to do. Residents and visitors alike have their own special ways to describe Gotland. The island of roses, of legends, Vikings, and nature in all her glory. For those who prefer an active holiday, Gotland has much to offer. Rent a bike or go hiking. Play a round of golf on one of the world-class golf courses. Go sea kayaking. Enjoy an underground adventure in the Lumilunda Caves. According to legend, Gotland was an enchanted island that rose every evening and sank again every morning. The enchantment was broken when a man by the name of Tiel Var came to the island, bringing fire with him. Geological studies show that the island indeed has sunk and risen many times from the sea. Presently, it is still rebounding from the weight of the glacier that covered it during the last ice age and is rising an average of one meter every hundred years. Gotland has been inhabited for over 7,000 years. Over 31,000 ancient remains have been recorded, making the island one of the richest archaeological zones in Sweden. Artifacts show that trade with continental Europe was in full swing during the Roman Empire, and probably even earlier. During the Viking era, and for several hundred years afterwards, Gotland, and especially its capital, Visby, became the center of trade in the busy Baltic Sea. Thanks to their skills in boat building, Gotlanders traveled far and wide, trading all the while. Visby in the 12th century was fabled for its splendor and affluence. Gotland's fortunes began a long decline in the 13th century when the Germans and the Hanseatic League began to control northern shipping routes. 
Vispu joined the League, becoming even more prosperous, but walled itself off from the rest of the island. Successful Gotlanders showed their wealth and piety by building splendid private churches, 92 of which still exist on the island. Finally, the disparity between the rich city dwellers and the poor peasants resulted in civil war and ultimately conquest by the Danes in the Black Year of 1361. Over 2,000 Gotlanders died and parts of Visby were laid waste. A monument to the victims of that invasion still stands near the city. This was the end of Gotland as a powerful trading nation. Other invaders followed, and in 1525, Visby was put to the torch. Gotland was annexed by Sweden in 1645. The great years were past, and the island decayed and settled into the slow pace of a forgotten backwater. All that changed in the 19th century when Gotland was rediscovered as a resort destination. Today, there are 58,000 inhabitants. More than half of all Gotlanders live in the countryside. Rural Gotland has over a thousand surviving medieval farms. Now, the invasions have resumed. This time, the warriors come armed with suitcases and credit cards. Like Cape Cod, Gotland is a premier vacation destination. People from all over Europe and beyond head here annually. Unlike the Cape, this destination has year-round appeal. The climate is very temperate, with long summers and warm autumns. The roses bloom until December. It's almost like being on a Greek island. There's plenty to see and do on Gotland all year round. Salmon, perch, pike, and cod teem in local waters. There are water sports and ice yachting, theater and concerts, a zoo, museums, hiking and climbing. The Gotland Grand National in November is the world's largest motorcycle competition. The Gotland Olympics, Stongaspelen attract both locals and foreigners every July. Sunday excursions always lead to new places. Cultural treasures in every parish. And there's something special about strolling through a medieval city after a light snowfall. The wide range of theater productions, exhibitions, and activities helped Gotland win the title of Sweden's Center of Culture in 2003. And again, like Cape Cod, there are beaches. Over 800 kilometers of fine ground sand or gently rounded pebbles bearing fossils over 400 million years old. Visit old fishing villages, caves and wind-blown sand dunes, places where you find peace, where you can be yourself. Gotlandic food is not like Swedish food. Barbecued lamb, smoked flounder, strong home brew. Other local specialties have names that mainland Swedes don't understand, but it's all good. And for dessert, Gotland is like saffron pancakes with dewberry jam and cream. Delicious. People all over the world are impressed by Gotland's unusual flora. Orchids and subtropical vegetation that shouldn't really grow here. Peach trees, mulberries, figs, grapevines. Gotland is home to sizable bird colonies and wild ponies. Surprisingly, Gotland has Sweden's greatest density of corporations mostly agricultural. The Baltic Sea is one of the world's busiest waters, and Gotland is at the center of it. In 1992, Gotland became an eco-municipality. In the windy summer days, the island is completely self-sufficient electrically. Gotland is home base for advertising agencies, web bureaus, and printing houses, food processing and electronics, vineyards, and world-class boat builders. King Carl 16 Gustav is a repeat customer. 